Hey guys, I'm Norb. And I'm Mike. And we are the Watchmen. The men who watch. If it's on a screen, we're watching it, talking about it, and sharing our thoughts about it with all of you. Da 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 I can finally do that, and not only can I do that, you know what I'm doing. I know what you're talking about now. So in case you didn't know that song, today we are talking about Hamilton that has now made its debut on Disney Plus. Yes, um, I'm very excited to talk about this today because for a long time, Hamilton was this thing everybody was talking about that I had no way of checking out. I just had to take everybody's word for it. And I, when I found out it was coming out on Disney Plus, I was like, all right, we can finally cover it on our show and, and get to see this thing. So, so read the synopsis, but I, I have some questions for you. I want to really oh, yeah, soak yeah, yeah. in how you saw so this. Let's, let's get into it because at the time yeah. of this recording, the show came out just like four days ago on the Friday yeah. Right, Friday of last week, and today's t recording Tuesday, and we're airing this a week later. So this is probably one of the first times we're actually doing a show like within a week of its release, which is pretty amazing. So to get Hamilton, it hot off the press. Hamilton is the Broadway musical about the life of American Secretary of Treasury and founding father Alexander Hamilton, with the lyrics, music, and book written by Lin Manuel Miranda, and based off of the biography Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow. The musical had made its incredible box office success in its Broadway production in the Richard Rogers Theater, as well as its off-Broadway debut at the Public Theater uh, in Manhattan. And it's a, it's a theater phenomenon. And uh, again, like I said, so many people, especially those who are involved in theater, have talked about this like crazy. So it was, so here, it was a okay. great opportunity to jump into this. So I've, I saw this in the theater last year in Chicago. It was finishing up its long, I think it was a two-year run. So my wife, my son Brett, and I saw it last December. So I was thankful to be able to see it on the stage because it was something I'd, I'd heard a lot about too. I knew the songs. The kids in Brett's theater groups were all singing them. I even had bought the soundtrack. So I'd listened to some of the songs just because I was curious because it was something... And it did come to Seattle, but it was sold out. It ran yeah. in Seattle for three weeks. Couldn't get tickets. Sold yeah, out. We tried. We tried to do the app. He said, this, yeah, "Enter the contest. Yeah. You can win tickets." Tried. Couldn't get it. But the big deal is that now that it came out on Disney Plus, people like you could finally see it that didn't get the opportunity. So right off, I gotta ask. I want to. I want to know how you watched it. I want to know. Did you have a good sound system? Did you watch it by yourself? Did you watch it with the family? Was it uninterrupted? I mean, because the, again, when you're in a theater watching Hamilton, you can't pause. The place is dark. I mean, you you know, you're you're in. And so, but watching at home, I know you can pause. I know you can talk over it. So, what I'd like to know for a very important first experience, set the stage. Tell me how it was for you and what you did to try to get the most out of something that I knew you were looking forward to seeing. So <clears throat> when I knew this was coming out, I I planned with everybody that we were going to watch this um, show together. So it was Friday, actually I think it was going to be Friday night. They ended up watching it Saturday night, and for reasons for whatever happened that day, we we got started late on watching it. It is later than I wanted to, and it's a long show. It's two hours and forty minutes or so. Yeah, it's long. So we all sat down to watch it in um, our main viewing area in the family room with the big TV and the big speakers and everything. And we watched, um, we got through about the first 25 minutes of Vanessa lost interest and people got tired, so we stopped. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a travesty. So, Vanessa lost interest. Actually, she didn't even. Uh, she she really didn't even give it a try. She was, she had no interest in watching the musical, and I wasn't going to fight her on it. I was going to force her to watch it, so she was out. And then we got to a point, and it sort of, it was again. We started late, so the energy was low. It was getting tiring, and I could tell that it was just okay. What we'll to pick this up later? Well. The pickup later for the for everybody just wasn't there. So I had to finish the movie myself. So I watched it in two parts. The first time with a false start, basically getting through about three or four songs, and then, or uh, however, the fifth, first 15 So your entire were. family, basically your two daughters and your wife, had no interest Swing in and a miss. watching the rest. Wow. Swing and a miss. 
And so I watched the expectations must have been too high or something. Well, I, I will I will preface it this way. So I watched to finish your first question. I watched the rest of it in my right here in my studio with my sound up and and on my you know my monitor that's in my room, which is pretty good size. Okay, so that's how I watched the rest of it. Um, typically, the girls have seen we have seen and been part of a lot of productions. The girls have performed in these big theater productions for dance. Uh, we've. We've watched some musicals live, you know, some small scale like your son's theater. And we watched some big ones where we've seen, you know, like Cinderella on the big stage of Fifth Avenue. And we've seen the middle of the road state uh, type of ones. So we've seen, you know, our share of musicals. Uh, I'll probably say from the beginning, there was not a lot of strong interest by my family to see this. They were not clamoring to see it. They didn't have any... driving interest that made them, oh, I can't wait to see this. So there okay, was not why, the hype as Why much. do you think, I'm trying to get into their heads, why do you think they weren't interested? Okay, be, okay, let me, hold on, hold on. Because it's clear that a lot of people think this is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. So right. when people think something's the greatest thing ever and it's got a lot of buzz, a lot of people are talking about it, sometimes that in itself can make you want to see it. Just because you feel like by seeing it, you're seeing something that everyone else has seen, and you're when it's being talked about, you kind of know. I mean, it's just you know, it's it's when something's a, a hit or I don't a big think, movie. I don't think they were around circles where people were talking about it. Okay, to be honest with you, I mean, I know right. you guys. You guys had your theater, your friends, your son's friends. Everybody's singing it, so you're already driven to get the music. This none, not, not a single note of this song ever played in our house. There was no one saying, "Let's get the soundtrack to it." And I wasn't either, partially because I wanted to not spoil it. I wanted to watch the movie completely fresh and not have the soundtrack in my head while I'm watching it, thinking, "Oh, I can't wait to hear the track number seven and track number nine. I wanted to have complete, you know, uh, complete, you know, from scratch feel on it. The anticipation just wasn't really there. And to be honest with you, there. There's something, even for me, I, I, I had to put in my head, okay, I know I'm going to be watching a live musical on TV. And that's not the same as being at the theater. You know, it's a different thing. You have to try to, you know, you're not watching a cinematic depiction of a musical like they've done with Phantom of the Opera or Les Miserables. This is a recording of a theater performance. So it's different. It's like watching a Grammy performance. You get that. I'm watching a theater show. So I know in my head I have to, I know I'm not watching a movie. And I think, I, I, I just don't think um, my family was there. Again, they didn't have the, there wasn't that strong draw pushing them to go see the show. I think they've just heard about it, but really had no draw to, to see it. There's no like actors that they want to see. So there's no real connection to it. And they didn't have friends who were pushing, oh, have you seen it yet? Have you seen it yet? So there wasn't that big strong push that way. They didn't have exposure to the music. And watching live musicals on, on TV is just not a thing. We like watching, if, I mean, if I had to choose, I like watching movie movies, not necessarily live performances on movies, unless it's like a group I really want to see, like Prince in some, in some live performance I've never seen before, or Michael Jackson, oh, I want to see that live performance. But normally it's not like what I gravitate to watching shows on. Like, you know, the, there's this thing in, in one of our local theaters that do... Phantom events, Fathom, Fathom events. They have all these live shows that you can watch in the theater. Oh, the, the blah, 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 ballet, Fathom events at your local theater. I have no desire to watch these live shows in a theater. And I maybe I'm missing out on something, but it's not normally my draw. That's not normally what I gravitate towards. So even with this, I wanted to see it because I'm just... I've heard so much about it. A lot of it from you know you. I've heard about it from other friends who do musicals and stuff like that. So I just had this personal curiosity about how big is this thing that everyone's talking about. But if I didn't have this curiosity, like why is everybody talking about it, and answered to be answered, I myself probably wouldn't be like I gotta go see this because I don't, I'm not. We had a, we did a show on musicals before, 
I've and learned about you. You're not into musicals. I, I'm not as big of a musical guy as you are. And, and I you know what? That you, is I, so funny to be, Nor, because you are a musician. Musician, I know. You're a singer. <laughs> it, this is a guy who has made and I, and I music what they can and do. songs, and yet he doesn't care for musicals or musical theater. I, I, it just kind of makes my head... Well, kind of, kind of, it's like the six-minute ad. Not that I don't care. E- 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 not that e- e- I don't care, e- e- but it's, it's not as been as strong of a draw. And... Um, like I told you when I was a kid, when whenever the Disney shows kicked into the song, I was like, oh, ah, another musical number. Can we just get back to the story, please? So all these little things I'll kind of factor in. So that was all part of it. That's a long-winded question to your to your question, your answer to your question. That's why this didn't come over well. Where basically, now I know does. the review is really just your review. It's, it's not really your family review. review. I mean, I mean, the, the rest first. of your family, it's a big thumbs down. So well. Not to say they didn't like it, but I'm waiting to see. We stopped. Well, they and didn't even I'm watch quite, it. I'm waiting to see if they want to. Well, no, just one. Vanessa didn't watch it, but Sophie and, and, and Jen watched it, but we came to, came to a point where we stopped. And I'm waiting to see if they go, can we finish Hamilton? Yeah, but and that's my point is they me, didn't even. I, I, think, I think if they would have asked, they would have asked by now. Well, that's what I'm thinking too, and I don't think it's going to happen. So yeah. it they moved on. didn't. it didn't grab them by the something and go I must finish this show it's it's the greatest thing ever so that's but that's that's them well I guess <laughs> I had, now it I comes down it. to are you going to talk them into watching the rest of it and I'm getting the impression you're not even going to you don't even now that you've seen it that you're not thinking they need to see the rest of it it got better I don't know am I wrong I'm now I guess we're we're about your own review well, and, and those are two. There's, those are two very different points because I love some movies that I like that I won't recommend for them to watch because I know that's not their thing, and I just don't know if this is their thing. Uh, like I said, I'm watching. I'm feeling the vibe in the room, and if you don't love the musical twenty minutes in to want to watch the rest, it's probably not really grabbing you. See, you can write not- your own song called "The Room Where It Happened," "The Room Where It Happened," and your story would be the room where. Everybody lost interest and left. <laughs> the room where it didn't happen. The room yeah. where it didn't happen. <laughs> so, you know, and I don't blame them for it. I, I just, again, if I didn't have the strong push of curiosity to get that answer question answered, I don't think I'd go out of my way to watch this in the sense that I don't seek out a lot of musicals anyway. But I did because I felt like I need to know what the buzz is about. So I had this burning desire to find out as opposed to that I just want, I naturally just want to go see it. I don't know if that makes any sense. I was on a mission. I want to know what is the big deal. Okay. And I was well, going to finish that. Well, tell me. Well, I did a lot of talking. You still want me to continue? <laughs> uh, well, uh, okay. I mean, I, I, I will say that I really like this musical a lot, and the and what I said to Norb before you seen it, I said the, the, I said obviously I don't want to spoil anything for you, but what I said is, you would appreciate the the rhyming and the songwriting because it is incredible how this is a two and a half hour rap that rhymes the whole time, and and it's and you listen to the way they talk to each other and the way it's in rhymes, as someone who writes music. I mean, you you'll write a song. I mean, this is this is insane compared to writing a song. It's writing a two and a half hour song that rhymes and has to make sense and tell a story and have all these characters sing different parts. And so, to that, I thought it was an amazing feat. And that's why, in my opinion, why one reason I think Hamilton was so huge is because I've never seen a musical like it where it's a two and a half hour rap, but it's creatively clever. It's got, I mean, even the rap, the, the music, it, the music changes. Sometimes it's kind of rap music. Sometimes it's it's a little more jazzy, but the rapping and the rhyming never ceases through the whole show. And I, I've never seen like that. So that's what I said to you. As I said, as a songwriter and a musician, I would think you would appreciate what, what Lin-Manuel Miranda did and creating something that has never been done. So I like that. Yeah. So to, to answer your question, yes, I I uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. I was 
I was, I was uh, in kind of, I was in awe at how much there was. And there was the musician part of me kicking in going, oh my God, how did they memorize all these yeah. lyrics? And I did, I looked it up. They actually talked about how typical musicals have, oh, where was that thing? I, they talk about typical musicals have like, um, might be a 10,000 words in the show. Um, you know, they talk about words per minute and this one blew it away. It's like yeah, what, with something, something that might be a, a 10,000 or 9,000. This has like 20,000. So by far and away, the most words per minute uh, on a constant basis. But yeah, just, uh, I mean, there's a lot of facets we can break down to, but uh, just uh, from the overarching standpoint, uh, I really enjoyed it. I liked it probably more than I even thought I would because I have my own preconceptions, right, about these things where I have this sort of distance sometimes when it comes to musical theater. I really well, enjoyed it. Well, that's a big word, the fact that your expectations were a little bit high because, you know, everyone had been building you up to this. This is amazing. So that that's a, that's pretty big that you, you it know, it delivered. I, it actually exceeded my expectations <laughs> because I was, what I found myself is with every song, sometimes there are times in a musical I'll watch a, a song and I'll just sort of, kind of tune out from the lyrics and I'll just watch and take in the music, but I won't be connected to the material. On this one, I really got pulled in by the storytelling and mm. the song yeah. lyrics, the way he did it and the way he could have conversations, yet it was still to the musical beats and to the, to the, to the rhyme and the rap was, was brilliant. And I found how I could just follow along and I'm pulled into the story in ways that normally musical parts to me are like the, okay, we're, we're breaking from the drama. Now we have to watch the music here. I was actually staying engaged in the story as the music is playing through. So that doesn't happen very often. So mm -hmm. I found myself really pulled more into these characters. And I think it's just, it's the combination of the, 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 the just the amount of words that are there, but yet you can follow along with it, but also the way he just told the story. It, it, it shined a light, a new light on how I looked at the Founding Fathers because yeah. when I think of our Founding Fathers and Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, don't you just imagine a bunch of guys in really these fancy old suits with maybe some wigs on and they're yeah, all very a honorable. Table. And they just all say, here, let's write it up. And it's all yeah. kind of just like business and everybody's great and there's no problems. At least that's my sort of historical remembrance of what that time period represented. Well, this... Work it down in a way where it's like it said all the all the politics, all the drama, all the side gossiping that you experience now, but put into the old days, and it made it a, a whole twist on my perception of what I imagined. I've always thought of the founding fathers and the government. Put a whole new twist on it, a refreshing new twist, which made me wanted to go back to history and go, is that really what happened? I'm going to look this up. So it, it 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 stirred my curiosity about history because this made me think, was there much more than I realized or was I just not paying attention? Or did they just not teach this in history class and there's a lot more to the story that they just never covered? So anytime you can do that, where you can sort of rewrite history in your mind, they've done something pretty special. And that's why I felt like I was learning something new and wanting to ask questions about right. the history I learned. Is there truth to this? And how truth is this? How much did they not tell the truth? Are they exaggerating? Or am I just learning a whole other thing that I didn't see? So yeah, you're right. Uh, it's it's insane even the concept of a duel. Like you said, of just just that if you're if someone pisses you off, challenge them to a duel and bring along your doctors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so I mean that you know, the the duel is at the, at the heart of things, but it's about betrayal. It's about mm. you know the struggle of family, having a family while trying to build something that you believe in and you want to have a legacy. In fact, that whole discussion, yeah, your, your legacy versus your family, you know, and this, these are things that I, again at this age mean so much more because we're at that age now where you and I talk about how we're we are at that point now where we're look we're closer to the end than the beginning. So we start thinking more about what are we going to leave when we're done? And yet you're still, we're still in the middle of drug juggling families and trying to make a living. And yet you're thinking about, well, what's my contribution in this world? And that's kind of what you learn about with all these different players. They all have agendas. They all have things that are important to them. And you find out real quickly how, uh, I think they brought up the whole thing. It's, it's easy to win the war. It's harder to lead. So it's, it's that whole thing where, you know, winning your independence from 
England was just the start. And in some ways, the easy part, the hard part is when you go, okay, you got your freedom. Now you got a country to run. Good luck with that. And it is hard because as we experience today, it's hard to be a politician because you've always got two sides to every story. You make these guys happy, these guys are going to be upset. You make them happy, these guys are going to be upset. So you get a good taste of that throughout this whole thing about balancing something that can never be truly balanced. And who do you sacrifice? What friendships or loyalties do you sacrifice? What family do you sacrifice? What of your own self do you sacrifice for this thing you believe in? It's, it's very powerful stuff and it very, you know, applies to what's going on in the world today right now because you're forced to take sides now in a way that we never had to. So, yeah, it just maybe it's just the time in our life, maybe it's the age, but the, yeah, this, so this hit me in a, in a much deeper way than most musicals wouldn't even touch. So, that was great. It's, it's amazing. And it blows my mind when they would go one song after the next and you're just hearing it. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, if they miss one word, the whole thing's messed up. Like, I've yeah, had they happen. never missed a word. They never yeah. missed a word. Now, and I know that they did some editing because there are times they put close-up cameras there on the stage that clearly were not yeah. there when they shot the wide yeah. theater version. So they could have fixed some rough spots, but I'm, I'm sure that the show is pretty seamless. I'm sure when you watched it, there was probably no major guffaws or, or goof ups that you know would be noticeable, but that's an amazing feat that the actors can learn all that material. So yeah, I know we're trying to keep the spoiler free and I think we're doing a pretty good job of it because you really don't, I don't think you could spoil the show unless we played every song <laughs> in the, in the yeah. movie and, and had everybody listen to it. So um, it, it, you, have to, you have to see it for yourself and really allow yourself to digest what they're talking about and put yourself back into that time period and imagine, you know, what uh, differently what your memory of it's like. Because it certainly was a different memory of history than, than what I recall. Well, when you talk about the message of what is your story and your legacy, I, I have learned that really our story is this show, The Watchmen. And I say that somewhat jokingly, but somewhat serious because by doing this show, you and I are really recording our thoughts on things and opinions that I I think it is funny that none of our kids watch or listen to the show. They have no interest at all. They know we're doing it. But I believe that when we are long gone, they'll be able to find these on YouTube and learn all these things about us that they didn't know. Because right now, they're not they're not paying attention. So yeah. we are creating our own story by recording all of this stuff through these hopefully, shows. Hopefully YouTube will still be around then <laughs> so that yeah, they hopefully. can watch it there because YouTube goes down, well, so will the archives of the show. But we'll have it in some form where they could pick, pick this up. And in the same way that as a kid, I would listen to tapes of my dad talking or you know, <clears throat> things like that. And it was only audio because we didn't have film or anything like that back in those days. But there was something magical about listening to your to your dad at a different time period because you know it was it's it's a different person that you remember and um well and that's the funny thing is our kids are in the other rooms right now and they could care less about what we're having to say there's their they're dad's just doing his thing yeah doing his show his thing. thing right now yep yeah when are you gonna be done dad are you gonna <laughs> be done soon so i can be loud again in the other room you know that's really all the concern is right now but I think 20, 30 years from now, they will they will hang on every word you say because it's like they're they're getting to know you. Uh, that'll be interesting if that. I mean, obviously, for long gone, we won't know if it happens. But you know, it, it is it is we are leaving this thing with our legacy of our kids, and someday our kids, kids, our grandkids, and and um, yeah, who knows how much this this stuff. But it's it's like reading old love letters from your parents or a diary like I, I read of my dad when he was in Germany in his in his 20s this is sort of our version of that yeah, but it's not tangible this is not on a thing you can open up with a piece of paper so hopefully the electronic medium is there for them to to watch but if they can they can yeah. see us they can <clears throat> hear us and they can <clears throat> watch our 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 emotions and, and and the way we express ourselves and and hear all these crazy stories that maybe they, they won't I know we're talking about stuff that I know I never share with them in, in some of these details of some of these shows. So if they did take the time someday to listen to this, they would learn some things about me that they probably didn't know. I learned stuff about you that I didn't know that came out in some of these funny episodes that you talk about some story, childhood story that 
Like, you never told me that. I know you studied karate. Things like that. So my kids will probably hear something. Oh, I didn't know dad did that. It was, mm-hmm. It's pretty funny. Well, it's a fact that when you're younger, you just think differently. And you change when you're older. It's the same for me. I, I think about when I was a kid on TV occasionally I'd catch the one o'clock movie and it was always some stupid black and white movie that I had no interest in seeing and I would turn the channel as fast as possible. But now I collect old black and white Twilight Zone or the the Outer Limits, these shows from the 50s and I'm curious and I I want to watch them. And part of it is I think about all the people that made these shows are, are, are gone. They're yeah. all gone. And all that lives on is this show but now that I'm older, I can watch these shows and, and understand what they're saying and the content and the storytelling. I just, my brain is, I guess, more mature in that way that, that I can not only appreciate what they did, but I can also follow along a little better. And I, as a kid, I was so preoccupied with, with my own insecurities and my own worries about just, are other people gonna like me? How can I survive the day at school? you know who's who who who's interested in me how do i fit in this social structure of other peers and mom and dad are just the people you know they can say to him blue in the face oh you're a great kid you're gonna make someone very happy you know it doesn't matter so our kids are at that age now where they're all about trying to fit in in their own with their peers not with us with their peers yeah right. so i look at it is that it's great to get this information down and when they're older, they will appreciate it. And it's something we can give them later in life when when it'll have more meaning. Right now, and it's like when we talk to Laugh about the kids, fact that they're in the next room and they don't yeah. care. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's when we have a talk with them, it's, oh, it's another lecture. We're getting another lecture about yeah. how you gotta work hard, you gotta study. And it's like, it's to a point now where you know you have to talk to them about it, but you wonder how much of it is actually sinking in because they just yep. hear, oh, they're going to tell me about how I need to do this and this is important yeah. and you got, you know, and you can't not talk to them about it, but you also don't want to be like a broken record that's just like, you know, in one ear, out the other. So it, 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 that's the stage that we're at now. I got two teenagers, two teenage daughters now, 15, 13. So just feeling that vibe. And I knew that someday this day would come, but you know, it's definitely where they're now getting that independent thought process where they definitely have minds of their own and opinions of their own and things they want to do of their own. They're not just going to do what we tell them just because. So, And the more they have balance. opinions, the more those opinions usually involve around mom and dad don't really get it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is true. It's so funny how we just become, we become, we become what our parents became to us. And no matter how much, how cool I think I am. Uh, they still have that overall thought. Although Sophie thinks it's pretty cool because I had a TikTok video that broke 100,000 views and she she has, she has holds great respect on that. So I still got some credibility. I just got some street cred with the teenagers. Yeah. I, I taught my son Brett how to mow the lawn last week. And I, I, I went through him with the whole procedure. You put the gas in the mower. And I said, and you start around the perimeter. And I said, see how you make a line of grass, then you follow that line on the next pass and you make sure it's inside the wheels. And that way you slowly cover all the grass. And when he finally took over the mower, he missed the line half the time, took the corners, even though I told him to take a 90 degree turn, he'd skip the corners. And so I kept pointing out parts he was missing and he'd go get it. And I said, okay, you do this, this side, I'm not gonna watch. And he came back and said, I'm all done. He says, and you know what, dad, I figured out Really what works good for me is I know you like to go around and around and work your way in. He says, I just go every which way until I get it all. <laughs> he said, and, it, and that works good. And I, I looked at him and I said, what do I know? I said, I've only been mowing lawns for the last 30 years of my life. I said, Brett, do it your way. He said, it sounds like you've got a good plan there. <laughs> well, and of course, it took him two hours to mow it when it can take me an hour. Well, and then some people who are really anal about their lawns want those lawn lines like they do in the ballpark where you see this line here and this line here. And you, you know, kind of like vacuuming. You know when you vacuum, you have that kind of pattern, the yeah. line, the diagonal, line, diagonal. Well, it sounds like Brett just went with the... <laughs> so yeah. The lines are just going all which way, right? That's basically no, it's just saying. about, you know, mowing your way around and just eventually getting it all. But yeah. of course, it's not to me about how it looks. It's just that takes twice as long. And 
and it's not. But efficient. hey, at least he's mowing the lawn. He's mowing yeah. the lawn, yeah. right? He's yep. Taking time right. away from playing video games to mow the lawn. That's a, but that's again, a good it's, step. The, the moral of the story, though, is I said, what do I know? I've only been doing this 30 years, and I could hear my dad <laughs> telling me that when I was a kid. He'd right. constantly say, Mike, I've been around. I've seen a little bit more than you. I heard that all the time. And, of course, now that's what I say. And, and so, so no yeah. matter what, we eventually become our parents. Yep. And so will you, kids. Someday, so will all you, stuff, kids. I've, I've heard, I've heard Vanessa say something. When I become a mom, I'm not going to be as strict as you. Yeah, yeah. Wait till you have kids. <laughs> the famous the Jin said, That's what I said about my mom. <laughs> yep. So, and when Jin says that, Vanessa goes, "Whatever." <laughs> <laughs> In so many words, but basically, it's something that degree. Yep. It's it's, it's just I'm life. Not gonna it's, nothing changes. It's the, it's the circle of life, and we just all go through it and. <laughs> So back you back to, to Hamilton. It. Yeah, back to Hamilton. <laughs> the tangent city right here. It's called the Tangent Men. Well, okay, it was a good tangent. Uh, well, yes, we're. I'm we? glad to hear that you appreciated the very things I I hoped you would in just the songwriting and storytelling and and the rap, just the fast paced delivery, Guns and Ships, which is the fastest song in the musical. There, there's a part where they. They are doing the words so fast, it's incredible that they can do it. And you can still make up what they're saying. Because they're yeah, having I'm, to cut out those, what are you, cutting out the consonants or the syllables to, to basically condense it to where you can say it that fast. Yeah, I made a note about that. I made a note about a few songs that stood out, but that was one of them, Guns and Ships. They had a Lafayette part in there, and I, I don't know the songs well enough yet, but uh, that was, I wrote down, ooh, Lafayette, ooh. So that was a, a cool song. It stood out for me, but you know, not every song was as good as the other. There's definitely ones yeah. where it's like, oh, gold star on that song. There's like, eh, okay, that's all right. And then there's I a found really that other Act game. One had more songs I liked than Act Two. I did too. You. I had the same yeah. thing. I had like a bunch in the first act and hardly any yeah. starred in the second. But they also kind of focus more on the story a little bit at the end. They so. do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I would say, um, I guess if I was to chime in here on this part is. Probably one of my favorite characters, and it's you personified the thumbnail, was, was the king. The king oh, had such too. a small role, but it but, was such a great role. And the actor who played that, uh, I don't know his, his name. I didn't get all the cast members' names down, but he was awesome. Cynthia um, told me that he oh, was in the show Glee. Back, uh, uh -huh. and she said he came from that, and she really, she said she really liked him in Glee because I didn't know. Mm -hmm. him Never either, watched it, said. so I don't know anything about Glee. Yeah, she said he came from Glee and. Yeah, the king, and when I saw it in the theater, when the king came out and did his song, I mean, the whole audience was just laughing into it. I mean, and that was, is my favorite part. I mean, the king's song is my favorite song because there's so much passion in that song. He's so unhappy. He's whining. He's pissed. He's saying, you know, you should just pay me for my love. You're going to regret it. But he does it in such a whiny, pouty, temper tantrum-y sort of way. And and also just the way he holds his position the whole time. Right. And it's just singing without moving. I mean, a cameraman's dream, right? That close-up cameraman, he could get in there tight on his face, get that focus, and think, okay, I can rest. He's not going to move. Yeah. <laughs> I can just, I, well, I'm and okay. That's why they went super tight on his face. And you could, you mm. know, there's times he's talking and singing and, and spits coming Spinning. out of his mouth, dribbling down his chin, which obviously by design, but yeah. added to the humor. But he had such a great... And this is one of those things I think being on Disney Plus as a TV close-up medium yeah. probably served better than someone who's in the back of the theater because you could see every expression and those eyes and the way his mouth moved and everything was great. I mean, he really just captivated the energy and you couldn't take your eyes off of him. And then he'd do a little thing where he's like moving his shoulders yeah. like stuff and just added to the, the, the humor of his performance. So by far, and he's only in the movie for like, Three Very little. times? You know, yeah, three he shows times? up a couple times later just to kind of laugh and but say, they're See, only quick, I told you. They're quick <laughs> appearances. And so, but every time he's he's just a scene stealer. So definitely uh, something to look for when you watch it. So uh, here's an interesting question. And um, I think Cynthia noticed it when we were watching. But when they all took a bow at the end, the king did not join the group for the bow. Oh, you know, it's funny. I didn't even think about it. The first thing I was thinking about was normally when you do a a, a a cast 
casting call bow at the end, they usually start with, at least from all the dance ones I've seen, they, they normally bring out all the secondary players and they take a bow and then eventually you finish with the leads and they get the big roar of thunderous applause. Yeah. And so you kind of lead up to the big finale with the biggest character. And this one it was like, he, Hamilton was like the second guy to bow because he was right already on stage. They didn't change the lineup. But that's a good point. I don't think I... Yeah, you're right. I didn't see him. So I was already kind of thrown off. Like, oh, wow, they already had Hamilton bow. That's different. But it was just like people in, in place just bowed. So I don't even know if I saw the whole company or not. But yeah. they just kind of, whoever's on stage bowed. But yeah, they didn't bring up uh, the oh, king. That was weird. Kind of surprising. Because yeah, he was definitely the uh, scene stealer for me. So I wanted to bring up a couple things I read that's kind of interesting uh, behind the scenes. So... Uh, when Mar when Miranda Lin Manuel Miranda came up with this idea, it was he was on vacation after his previous Broadway show. It was in the late two thousands, like two thousand six, two thousand seven, and he just had this idea. I think it was, he was reading the book, and he had this idea. This would be a really cool hip hop story. I could see a story here, and he was surprised that there hadn't been one done. Apparently, there, he researched it further, and there was a small one done back in nineteen seventeen, but since then, no big production done. But it took a long time. It took like a year to write the first song and almost another year to write the second yeah, one. Yeah, years to write it. Just. So just for the first two, like two years, well, that's crazy, right? Well, and you then look, in, But when you listen to it, you think, this would have been really hard to write. When there's so many songs, two hours and 40 minutes worth of, yeah. of almost nonstop material. Well, and it's but the in, rhyming part. The rhyming part makes it more difficult. You have to have it all rhyme. Yeah. I mean, most musicals do have rhyming, but, you know, it's usually Not like a stanza that. of lyrics where you go, no yeah. more talk of darkness. And then, you know, a couple of lines here is like, <laughs> so you're writing just a heck of a lot more, you know, per pound. So just, again, the quantity of it is 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 crazy, which is there's a theme to that, too, because they talk about in the movie, why are you writing like you're, what is, what's the line? You're writing like it's, you're running out of time or it's, the end of the, I can't remember the, the lyric. There's a song that talks about he's writing yeah. like it's the end of his life or something. I think and, more of talk less, smile more. Yeah, well, there's that too. But no, he was writing like crazy. Obviously, just the lyrical content is, is, is nuts. Well, and Hamilton but, himself was a writer. That was his power, is his ability right. to write. Yeah, they talked so, about when they when they did all the uh, articles for the... 51. Um, 50, yeah, 51. Hamilton wrote most of them. Some of the other guys were like kind of petered off and he he wrote most of that stuff himself. So mm -hmm. he took it upon himself obviously to, to do all this stuff. This stuff I just don't remember in history class. <laughs> you know, yeah. half the stuff they cover like, did that really happen? I don't remember that. I don't remember that other woman. <laughs> so You know, for me like growing that. up, all Alexander Hamilton was to me is the face on the $10, $10 bill. bill. Exactly. <laughs> That's all I knew. I, you, you think more of George Washington, or you hear John Adams, and you, I don't know. There's just they're just bigger names. Yeah. So John Hancock, you know. We all know the John. Put Hancock, your John yeah. Hancock on that. I mean, that's so. Yeah, with Hamilton, I'm with you. I learned a lot I didn't know, and in a way that was truly entertaining and unique, like nothing I'd ever seen. So I, I'm. And and I, I can give you the 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 view from seeing it in the theater and then seeing it in this Disney. Oh yeah, Plus I'm curious. Well, actually, version. my first question I wanted to ask you was because I didn't really get to ask you of the whole family. But when you all saw it live for the first time, was everybody in ag agreement? Like they all felt like this was the greatest musical they yeah. ever seen. It was very powerful. I remember at the end, just and you know, part of it you're in the audience, and I mean everybody's feeling it, but. But yeah, I think I got teary-eyed at the end when he died. You know, it was very moving. I didn't get teary-eyed on this version, and uh, maybe it's because I'd seen it already seen it on already. stage. And but but it was yeah, it was. You know what I would say though is that when we saw it in Chicago, our tickets were around 120 bucks each, and we were in the balcony, so we were nowhere near the front row. We were way up in the nosebleed. I mean, okay. we were not in the nosebleed, but we were. On our way to the nosebleed. And you, need, you needed binoculars to see yeah. facial expressions, right? It was hard to see facial expressions. And of course, you could see the whole set really well and, and see the choreography of the dancing and the, the timing of everything, and I enjoyed that. And of course, you could hear everybody clearly, and the music sounded good in the theater. But I really enjoyed seeing it this way because I felt like I not only got a front row seat, I got to be on the stage 
Right. When when they, when they go in with these clearly edited in close up cameras that are floating around them, you know, closer than you could be if they were doing it live. So I loved, and my biggest fear of this version was that, and this is my biggest complaint about concerts when they do a concert and they put it on disc. Like I have, I have a collection of Blu-rays of like Madonna's concert, and I have. Uh, Kylie Minogue, I have even a Katy Perry concert because I, I never went to these concerts and I love their music. So I bought the Blu-ray, the concert and the hyper editing drives me bananas because what you can't even get a sense of the stage because they are whoever edits Cutting these the things, the they're time, convinced yeah. that the only way to create the energy of this concert is to cut every second. And to me, I can't watch a dance move. I can't look at choreography because I'm I'm constantly being moved around through the cuts and it drives me bananas. I, yeah. I, I, it's disgusting. And so I was worried that Hamilton was gonna do the same thing. And thankfully, I felt like they practiced restraint. Yes, they had cuts, but they weren't every second. They were probably about every five, five or six yeah. seconds. But it was enough to where I felt like at moments I could just soak in what was happening on the stage. And I loved the overhead cam. They even broke the, we call it a, a breaking the, uh, Fourth the axis, the axis, oh, the axis. And they went mm -hmm. behind the stage and, and they did yeah. a good job moving the camera behind you, but then getting back in front to where you don't have this jarring confusion from breaking that axis rule, the 180 degree axis. And, uh, so I was very pleased with the editing. It, it worked for me, and that, that was my biggest relief, is I was afraid they were gonna ruin it with too fast a cuts. Thank goodness they didn't. So I loved and, it. I loved it because of that. Yeah, and I know what you're talking about. It's interesting because now that you have kids in theater, and I, uh, Vanessa's been doing dance, and I started recording their shows, what you learn quickly when you're making these for the kids who are in the shows, the last thing you want to do is shoot a bunch of close-ups because oh, as soon yeah. as you go to close-up, you lose everybody else on the stage. And that's the yep. danger in productions like this is, yeah, you want to see the emotions of some facial close-ups, but when you've got a whole bunch of choreography going on, you miss all that and you don't get to appreciate it when the camera's anything but a wide shot. And so when we do these theater things, we found that you actually just 90% of the time, it's just a wide shot, see the whole stage, and really nobody can complain, but it is less dynamic because you're not well, cutting Well, as a filmmaker, I call it practicing restraint. Because, yeah. you know, as filmmakers, we want to go in close because we want, the closer you get to someone's face, that's where you can see the emotion of the performance. Well, and, and, if, and you're and moving if we the were camera doing, with them. It's dynamic we, and it's alive. And if, but we were, wide if we were shot doing our show, down. Yeah, if we were doing these shows that we were cutting not for the kids, but for a Joe Blow audience member, we would be cutting a lot more close-ups because we want it to be interesting for the viewer. But when the viewer is the kid who's dancing, you want to make sure that kid doesn't get cut off. So it's a totally different reason, motivation to doing what they're doing. But you're right, there's a certain amount of restraint where... Yeah, but you haven't not, seen these concert these concerts. Oh, I've seen. No, they, I've seen. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah it's quite. Yeah, you got the you got the cable. You got the boom cam, jib cam that's flying around. You got the close up cam, the, the dance cam, cam the wide shot, and it's. I know what you mean. I've seen enough of these uh, live shows where well, you know. yeah, it's 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 just cutting all but the just time. Just sit on a shot. Sit it, on man. a shot. Let me see the group. Let me see the dance moves where they're all in sync and. and yeah. Thank goodness with this Hamilton, they practiced restraint and I felt like it was a good balance. They still did the cuts, but they did it in a way where I was okay with it. I felt like I could yeah. I could see things enough and, and it was great. I, I really had a front row seat and and even beyond that, I got to be on stage at times in close-ups with these characters and really, really be a part of it. So compared to the theater experience, this was definitely a one-up from just being able to really I like the king, you know, the close up on the king when he's singing, that's insane. It was chin yeah. to forehead. Yeah, close yeah up. super close. And yeah. it was awesome. I mean, it's like you're right there with him. Just right there. You can see every little, every little spit falling out of his mouth and, and his eyes, those eyes of intensity. And that was great. It was great. Yeah. So my favorite, um, so he's definitely my favorite character. I think my. The female character, who's I think just voice I really like, because it was just pure and just really angelic. I really liked the wife 
of Hamilton. I don't know what her. Yeah, what? I know she's what one of do the you sisters. think she was? What nationality? She was Asian. I was trying to figure she, out. Yeah, what. she looked like she might have been mixed because she was very fair skinned, but she didn't look yeah. like she was 100. percent You know, she might have had some Chinese in her. It's hard to tell. That's what I thought. I would. I would think she might have a little European in her, just to kind of. She, she looked like she was a mix, but she had a really sing. beautiful voice. Um, and I don't know if that's the same. You know, because I know when they do a show, they start off and every person's cast particular for a certain style. And then they start doing the off-Broadway versions, the traveling shows. And I assume they try to find members who sound and look like the originals, too. So I always wonder if, you know, like with your Chicago version, how the performers were different from this version. Because this one was kind of the original cast, wasn't it? And then the one you saw was the Chicago mm -hmm. cast, which clearly... <clears throat> didn't have the same people, but I bet the king still looked like the king. Probably had the same mannerisms, and and uh, he was thinner. I remember the king in the Chicago show was a thinner, thinner actor. The the actor playing the king, he was a pretty big guy. Was he? I noticed okay. that right away. He had a big build compared to the, <clears throat> okay. but you know, still still white guy. <laughs> you know, yeah. right? right. <laughs> oh, so yeah, that was probably my favorite uh, uh, female. Uh, performer. Do you have a favorite song out of this? I know you, you you know this soundtrack pretty well by now, so I'm just curious like if you had to pick one song that you're stuck with, you can only pick one song out of here and that's going to be the one that's on your playlist. Is there one standout favorite that you go like, oh, I gotta go with one. This is the one. Uh, it'd be the King song. It was just such a and I think it was the what I sang at the beginning of the show. Da 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 I mean, it, you just kind of instinctively want to sing along. I, at one point he says, everybody now. And right, right. It's, it's just, that's a fun little part of the song that y you as an audience member can quickly learn and sing along with. And I think that made that song just so so memorable to me. And just the fact that the king sings it with such such angry, frustrated, unhappy passion about, you know, the idea of losing his flock. And and there's warnings in that song. It it. To me, it, 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 when you talk about the history lesson of this this show, it's a great way to really get you to understand why they're breaking from England, and yeah. also England's stance on the matter. I mean, he says, "I sent you away with a promise and an arrangement. We had an arrangement, and you pay me taxes, and that's the price of my quote love." Yeah. Right. which is really what I do to protect you. But now you want to break away. I'm warning you. I'm not going to allow it. I'm going to send troops out to kill your friends and family. <laughs> Again, it's, it's just, you know, he's he sings about love and then he ends up where I'm going to kill your friends and family, meaning I'm not standing for this. And right. to me, that just, it says so much about what this story is all about. So... Yeah, well, and that's, um, I said before, that's my favorite character. But I think for a favorite song, I had three songs that I just noted, and I, I would have to listen to them more to actually decide which one I really like. But the ones that had the biggest impact on me was Right Hand Man, that's the Here Comes the General, and they had this boom thing that was yeah. very kind of R&B, hip-hop, really liked that. And that was also the first time, I think, in the show where they had George Washington, Burr, and Hamilton all having this strategic conversation. Great but stuff. it was still in the song form. Well, you and made I, me pick a song. It just doesn't mean I didn't like all the other, like, oh, I, I, I like that thought. a lot, but I had to pick one. Yeah, I understand you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat and give you a couple more. The right hand band I really liked. Satisfied <laughs> was another Make song that I liked. one and then this. he lists three. Uh, yep, I cheated. Satisfied though, it had the first female rap that was really fast and that was by the uh, one of the sisters, mm -hmm. the sister of his wife. Uh, that would have stood out like, whoa, she can really, she can really rap with some speed in there. And then the last one um, was the Guns and Ships with the Lafayette. We talked about it earlier, the, yeah. the Lafayette uh, part. I really like that one. So those are those are my three songs that uh, I like. Kind of room where it happened. I like that one. The room that was where good. it wasn't happened. That, yeah, the that room was, where wasn't it that a happened. Second act. A second act. That song. was, I think, first and second. Yeah, yeah they 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 re, they, they, re, uh, they explored it again in the second one. That was a good one. I was like content wise, what they're saying is is pretty powerful, but. I think just from impact and like, oh, I like this. Those are the three songs that kind of just hit me, hit me in the core. Like, ooh, this is something different for sure. I like how they teach you how dual works all in a song. It's like they count from one to ten, and they have a every number. It has an explanation of this is what they do at one. This is what they do at two. This is what they do at three. And that was cool too. It's like they're educating you on on the concept of a duel. Yeah. 
Yeah, I hadn't really seen a duel uh, done like that before either. So, yeah, pretty pretty cool how they uh, showed that. It was a big part of how what happens in his to Hamilton and his family. This, this duel thing is a big part of that. So, yeah, I learned a lot. That's the thing is, I I, I not only was entertained, but I I learned and and made mm-hmm. me want to relearn what I knew about history because. To unlearn what you've more, learned? Much more, <laughs> unlearn what you have learned. I, I just felt like, I don't remember this when we studied it. This is a lot more interesting than the version we got taught. Yeah. I, you know, history was, I think as a kid, you, it, it reminds me of Vanessa because she doesn't like history. It's just not her favorite class. And I try to explain to her why it's important. But again, when you're trying to talk to kids <laughs> and they're just not interested in something and try to tell them why you should be interested. No. Nope. It doesn't make sense until they really truly become interested. But you try to. You try to say, well, it's important to understand what happened before. That way you understand things are going on now and things like that. But at some point, you just have to kind of become interested yourself because you just have a curiosity about how things used to be. But when when we talk about the Declaration of Independence and governments and Revolutionary Wars, you just kind of like, ah, history stuff. But I kind of remember being that way too. It was like, oh, we got to study the wars. We got to study why this happened. But it's never that interesting. It's always about, oh, so the Declaration of Independence was signed. It was led by blah, blah, blah. And these gentlemen signed it. You know, well, you it's more interesting if there's stuff. killing or involved or yeah, you know, war. Yeah, hear about this other woman that somebody was sleeping with. And yeah. now this person betrayed that person. And if they did, it certainly wasn't as interesting. Yeah, I know. Your daughter missed life. out on when it got into the nitty gritty relationship betrayal stuff in yep. Act 2. But who knows? Maybe at some point they'll revisit it, but I just don't see them slapping it on any time real soon. There's just not a push for it. So in due time, in due time. Yeah. But, what did you think yes. of the set, the set, the, the way they designed the set as far as... Uh, the set was cool. The lighting also. There's. A, there, <laughs> I just remember one point where um, the king says, I, I think he says, I'm feeling blue, stomps his feet, and then a big blue light signs on him and everybody's <laughs> laughing. That was clever. Yeah. I think probably the coolest thing, it's 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 a... It's an all right set. It wasn't like it blew my mind. I've seen better sets in terms of just like really cool transitions. But well, but think the, about the circular rotating. Well, I was gonna say yeah. the circular. Um, there's a part of the stage that spins like a turntable. Well, there's and two they parts. They use that in a very clever way to allow for dynamics and movement in the show. Well, so they that, have two rings that two that rings. Are, yeah, so yeah, one can di- move and one speeds. can stop or opposite directions. Was, that was a cool device. I give them props for that. The rest of it was. You know, it was kind of like what I'd expect to see, but that that made a, a, a nice transitional device. I, I did like how they used that, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Do you like that old? Oh yeah, little, yeah this, that, I don't know what you kinda, call that. It's they like had a, a little bit of synthesizer a synthesizer kind of sound effect kind of lead in before yeah. one of the songs, right? But they yeah. they use that a lot throughout the yeah. show. That synth synth kind of. Uh, and surround sound, it traveled around the Yeah, it travels from too. left to it's right cool. and stuff like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like I said, it was, it's, it's neat to see this infusion of, um, you know, there's some, some old style, but mixed in with some new style hip hop. And yeah, it's just it's really all over the, the different genres. But there are times when you, know, you break out and you can hear the DJ, you know, and some modern stuff like that with little DJ uh, voices sampled in. So it definitely had that. Um, yeah, you know, pulse on what's you know kind of new style mixed in with, of course, the conventional style that you you expect to see from a musical. So, yeah, I really I'm glad I saw it, and I now I see why people were so um, couldn't stop talking about it. You know, it would have been a cool one to see if you could, you know, especially if you could you could see the show and be in good seats. I mean, I think any show, a live show, it's amazing how where you are. Can oh, affect yeah. your memory of that of that concert. Yeah. I've seen plenty of nosebleed shows and they were okay. And yeah. then when I went, actually had the chance to go to some good shows and sit in a good spot. Like, oh man, the memory and the experience is totally different. It's totally I, mean, different. I think about the Michael Jackson show that we saw in Vegas. Um, that was great. And I know those tickets cost a little extra, yeah. but it was a really cool, mm. you know, experience. And it was uh, uh, just. I loved it, and I'd love to go again, but those ticket prices are not cheap. So I'd love my family to go see that. I think they would really enjoy it, especially since they know Michael Jackson songs and, and all that. But it has, it's not, yeah, it, you pay 
pay a premium to get those that awesome view. But you do. You know, it is kind of that, you know, that experience of being in there. It does change your memory of what the show was like. So, um, so I, I, I feel like I was lucky to watch this on the television screen because of the fact that I got the benefit of those facial reactions, you know, like the king and all the other ones and moments where you know, you'd miss that in the wide view that you have when you had to be in the nosebleed balcony seats. So yeah. that is one of the benefits of watching it on a medium like this with uh, Disney+. Plus. So I'm glad they put it on there. So people like myself who never got a chance to see it can finally see it. And it was really good. Yeah, I read this was, they were actually preparing it to release in movie theaters next year. It was going to be a movie theater release. Mm. And they decided because of the COVID to release it instead now on Disney+. Plus. And I, I'm glad that they did because during this time of COVID, the, the industry I think that has been hit the hardest has really been the theater industry because oh, yeah. it's just shut down. I mean, there's no, there's no Broadway, no nothing all those people out of work where they can't they're going to be the last ones allowed to come back and right. so releasing this has given a chance for people to see a theater performance in the safety of their own yeah so. and it made sense the fact that people were are at home a lot now with sometimes only watching tv as your source of entertainment to have something like this you know, I'm sure it was a big boost for Disney Plus. I don't know what the. Well, I saw that it was one of the biggest downloads over the weekend. I don't know how much financially it helped them, but I'm sure a lot of people subscribed and tuned in that weren't subscribed prior to Friday. Well, so, it would have made more money. I am convinced it would have made more money if they had done a theater release because it, they charge more. I mean, people yeah. would have gone. I would have gone. You would have gone. And. I think they sacrificed some profit to release it now. And I think that comes down to Lynn manuel Miranda's decision. It's his property. It's his content. He owns it. And I'm mm -hmm. glad that he decided to, to, to forego some financial gain by letting it go on Disney+. Plus. The funny part, I think, is I caught in the news about two weeks ago. And I, I love this about big companies. They love to advertise good deals. And they love to advertise when they're doing something great. But Disney Plus quietly did away with their free seven-day trial about two weeks ago. <laughs> what a coincidence. What a coincidence, huh? So, and they didn't they didn't make that big news. They didn't announce, we're getting rid of our seven-day trial for Disney Plus. So sign up and pay right away now. They quietly did away with it because they knew people would just sign up for that to see Hamilton and they wanted to make money. So again, money makes the world go round. It's a smart move. I mean, who wouldn't do that, right? If you knew you were going to be yeah. in for one show, you knew everyone would jump on that and take advantage of it. So it's kind of a no-brainer that that would be, <laughs> would be the move. But, you know, Disney was losing that otherwise. So it makes sense. You got you to gotta capitalize on your, on your properties when yeah. you have a chance to. And there's only one time. I just think it's funny release. how they did it so quietly. Oh, we're going to do it. <laughs> Last <laughs> chance to sign up. You know, to tell them that it's no longer on sale. I guess yeah. only if there's going to be an advantage to signing up would you announce it. But yeah. they already had the, the draw. So, yeah, pretty smart. I'd do yeah. it. I was done. <laughs> there's um, a lot of people that sit around that we don't know that quietly discuss how can we maximize profits. And... Somebody said, we should get get rid of that seven-day trial. People are just going to sign up and see it and quit. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah just, that's true. It's all those discussions you never hear about. And and uh, another thing, there was an article uh, that someone shared on Facebook that the actor who played Burr talked about that um, he really appreciated Lin-Manuel Miranda's effort to include everyone on profit participation on the release of this on Disney+. Mm -hmm. Plus that... He said a lot of times what happens is is only the main actor will get it. Well, it be, and as he said, because in films, it's different. When you're an actor in a movie, profit participation is built into your contract. But he said for all the theater actors, they don't have any kind of film didn't have a profit participation. So they worked all that out before the release. And he said everybody who was in this is getting compensated. And I was glad to hear that because, you know... 
Disney may have a Mickey Mouse as its head figure, but Disney is not going to want to pay an actor if they don't have to. Because oh, sure. they want to make as much money as they can because they are a publicly traded company, just like Apple Computer. And it's all about the stock and pleasing the board of directors. And so I'm glad that Lin-Manuel, he would have had to been the one that said, no, we're, you're, we're going to do a deal and everybody gets a, a participation on this before we allow. So Well, and I'm sure in the musical too that if you were to be in that room, I'm sure that was not an easy discussion because how do you take a musical crew of how many actors in this thing? Mm -hmm. A lot, right? <clears throat> yeah. There's probably, I don't know, 30, 40 actors or something like yeah. that. And how do you divide that pie up in a way that's fair? I'm sure somebody probably felt like they got, someone else got more than they did. And, you know, I'm sure not everyone's is all happy and roses, but uh, it's at least they, they divvied it up to some degree to be as fair as possible. But eh, I'm sure there's probably someone in there who didn't get what they wanted. And, yeah. you know, but. But I mean, we could do a whole show devoted on what's called Creative Hollywood Accounting, where movie companies release a movie and then they'll sell it to another fictitious company that was created just so they could show that marketing costs were never recouped. I mean, we have firsthand experience of that with our own. And I mean, you just just go on Google and search out Hollywood accounting and you can find from Frank Darabont suing the Walking Dead AMC. I mean, it is a well-known fact that companies are constantly, movie studios are constantly trying to get out of paying the actors profit participation by inflating the cost because, of course, the deal is based on gross and not net. And so... Or it's, net, not it's, gross. Or net, not gross. It, it's yeah. ugly. It is ugly when you yeah, read really about how often movie studios are doing this to yeah. to not have to pay agents and actors. And so it was nice to hear that, at least in this case, they had done something to make sure that these actors were taken care of. And uh, that's what it's about. It's about taking care of everybody. But when it comes to big companies, they're not, they're about the bottom line. And we, we know that all too well. So you know, and, and watching Hamilton kind of shows that whole thing about everybody's got a, uh, an angle, a bottom yeah. line, and, and there's oftentimes a no-win situation where you're going to be caught in the middle. And yeah. it's kind of how life is. Nothing's black and white and simple. It's always a juggling act when you have so many interests at hand. So that's what made that show compelling in the story yeah. standpoint and then the music of course um, on a whole other unique level and that made the musical part compelling so combine a good story a unique take on history with music that's just never been done like that on stage uh, at least not on this level uh, pretty darn good so you sh if you haven't checked it out yet bite the bullet pay the Disney Plus <laughs> sign up <laughs> for a year and go watch this thing. All right, it's, it's pretty good. Or else, you know, like what everybody else is trying to do, borrow their friends' accounts. But <laughs> well, you look at it uh, this way. Yeah. I mean, it was a hundred bucks a ticket to see it. I mean, you can get a Disney Plus subscription. I think for around 40, 40 bucks or so. Bucks. It's, a good, it's a heck it's a of a deal. Cheaper, and you, and can you get, get better close-ups. And then you can also watch the Rise of Skywalker for part of the <laughs> membership. I mean, it's a win-win. So it was funny. I was just thinking about uh, Disney Plus when it first came out a few months ago. Obviously, for us, the draw was Mandalorian. The Mandalorian. Our, our kids enjoyed, at least my kids enjoyed watching the old, their old favorites, like Kicking It, the, the old live TV shows, little sitcom style things. And they got to a point where they watched all those and they were kind of done. And it's <laughs> Disney Channel just sort of sat around. I mean, mm -hmm. we did not turn in, turn on Disney Channel for a long time because there was nothing to watch. And then we kind of slowly waited for this after they made the announcement. So after what watching do you mean? this, you now, can show them Star Wars Episode One. You can show them Episode. We got six. discs of that. <laughs> I don't need Disney Plus for those anyway. Yeah. There are some other shows on there that you know that. And actually, we talked about this off camera. I told you that there was a really good Mars documentary on there. Um, yeah. And yeah. Watched it. So while you have Disney Plus, if you're going to get it to watch Hamilton. Um, Watch some of these other things. So there's some pretty cool stuff in there that talk about, you know, I, I watched the SpaceX documentary. That was pretty cool. And the one about the penguins. So I actually found my, actually I made a liar of myself. I did watch a bunch of uh, Disney Plus stuff in the past two weeks after the calm when everybody mm -hmm. was kind of done watching things. I found some stuff on there that was actually pretty intriguing that I, 
you know, documentary form, which I wouldn't normally think about Disney Plus and documentaries. But they do well, have if you have, if you like that. The Simpsons, they have the 20 seasons of The Simpsons all on Disney Plus too. They've got right now. They, I think it's Disney Fox, so they've they own the rights. So you know, I'm not a big Simpsons. I know fan. you're not. I was talking to other people that might be, but yeah, I know no, you're I'm not. Just, thought you were talking to me, so I'm yeah. not. But. <laughs> Even my kids, I think they've watched a little bit, but they're definitely not. Uh, well, not, you, not you're just not into anything fans. cartoony. <laughs> that's not necessarily true. What I do like, you watch that's cartoony? Like certain, I like some cartoon stuff. I like, I like um, Scooby Doo. Come Scooby on. Scooby Doo. Yeah, exactly. I'm talking about you're not into anything cartoony now. I like Ponyo. Ponyo mm, came that's out a, a I'm few talking years about ago. TV. We're talking about TV shows. Okay, TV, oh, shows. TV shows. Yeah, not movies. Um, not movies. I like the Family Guy Star Wars shows. Those were cool. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's about it. <laughs> oh, and I, I, I was late to the party watching, um, what's the Squidward, uh, squ uh, squ SpongeBob SquarePants. Did not watch that. I thought it was annoying when it was during the time when the kids were all mm. into it. And then I discovered it later and found out it was actually pretty hilarious. I don't watch it now, but there was Still a time when to me. late in the game, I actually did watch some of that. And it was it, I found it to be funnier. Funnier than I realized... At the time, I didn't think it was funny. It actually was funny. Well, nowadays, all those cartoons, whether it's SpongeBob or Teen Titans Go or any of them, they're all being created by people our age or maybe a slightly younger. And yeah. so they will throw in lots of adult humor. Right. That that the kids goes right by them, but to yeah, us, we yeah. get it. So they've found a way to, to entertain you know, a multi-generational audience, which is, is good. Phineas and Ferb is like that. They did a good job with a lot Never of watched it. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I watched Just the case. cartoon thing. I don't watch cartoons. Yeah, that's right. According to, Mike. According to me. I can say, of course you don't watch that. You don't like cartoons. <laughs> All right. So anything well, else? Anything well, else we haven't I, covered on this? Highly recommended. Uh, see Hamilton on Disney Plus. It's worth the money uh, if you haven't. Worth it. So... Yes. Great. Don't great change show. the subject because you're my favorite subject. <laughs> Another good line. They have a lot of good, clever lines. Good plays on words in there throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Awesome. I do have so, a small surprise. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Well, I talked to, to Brent and Cynthia and I said, uh, so with our show in Hamilton, do you have the, you, I know you saved the program for when we saw the, the show in Chicago. Could I borrow it? And both of them don't know where it is. <laughs> completely lost. So, That's so funny. So I was waiting thing, for that. And so here it is. The only nope. thing that was handy was when we saw in Chicago, we bought this $10 recyclable <laughs> grocery store <laughs> bag. You know, everything, whenever you go to a show, everything is highly overpriced. So this I like cheap how you have to tell us $10. <laughs> bag was 10 bucks, but we bought it. And uh, so there is our... Souvenir from when we saw in Chicago, the Hamilton grocery bag. It still <laughs> cracks me up that you, they had the program, they can't find it. That's that's hilarious. It sounds like yeah. something we'd say in our house. Yep. But I tell you, you know, the biggest ripoff, everything costs, you go to you go to a Seahawks game, the beer is expensive. You go to any theater thing, things are expensive. But I think the biggest rip of all is going to the Barnum and Bailey Circus, man. We went to that a couple times with the kids. Oh man, talk about mm. ripoffs. I mean, things that are just, you knew they cost probably 50 cents to, you know, to be made that they imported from China and they're char charging like 20 bucks for some little little stuffed animals Terrible. with Barnum & Bailey Circus on it. We ended up getting one of the little elephants to sit on there and I, I don't know how much we paid for that, but um, the, the drinks, the little, the little uh, cup, souvenir cups, all that stuff is, is outlandish. But man, they make it a killing with those things. Yeah. But, I know the price you pay. You want to go to these shows. Everything's expensive. Fifty dollars. Well, you know the kids are going to want it, and the urge to buy something for your kids is is high. And they know you're going to. Well, and that's another advantage of watching this on Disney Plus. You don't have to worry about getting suckered into that's buying right. some expensive ten dollar recyclable 
shopping bag because that's right. You're home. You've already saved ten dollars. Ten dollars. <laughs> so really, that Disney Plus subscription that was forty something, it was really only thirty five now. If you look at the math. Well, and I bought so, Brett a Hamilton T-shirt, which was like forty bucks. I mean, forty. So bucks you break for a even. You actually made money. Yeah. You made money by watching Hamilton on Disney because you would be out fifty, and now you're only out forty. So you've well, saved ten. You made ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, I I got I I've lost money. So you have a chance to do better than I did. <laughs> And you can watch the, the Mars documentary on top of that for free. Yep. So it's a, it's a win, 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 for sure. Good stuff. I'm going to have to get stuff. the soundtrack. Well, that or else I'll just do my usual method where I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> You'll <laughs> get it one way again. or another. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was our review of Hamilton. So I want to thank you guys for uh, you know, those of you watching on YouTube. Appreciate your visual support. Uh, make sure you hit that like button, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And that way you'll never miss a single episode. And if you're listening on podcasts, we appreciate you too. So please continue to do so. Tell your friends about us. And if you guys want to send us a message just to let us know what you think, it's to say how great we are or how much we suck or... If you want to hear us talk about a future subject or a future movie you'd love for us to review, we'd love to hear about it. So, Or if you a, want us to message. talk less and smile more. <laughs> That's right. Inside joke, Hamilton style. I'm Norb. And I'm Mike. And we are The Watchmen. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time. Thanks for watching The Watchmen. Please click on here to watch other episodes and be sure to hit that like button too. And please subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you'll always be alerted to any future episodes. It really helps us out and we appreciate it. We'll see you next time. And remember, we'll be watching.